CPUs are getting more and more powerful, producing increased heat with each generation. In fact, there's almost no CPUs from Intel or AMD's lineup that come with a box cooler anymore. So what's the best way to cool your CPU without eating into too much of your budget? An AIO is your way to go. How about one that costs less than $100? Well, Montech has your answer right here, and I'm gonna give you all the details. Hey YouTube, I'm Danny, welcome to the channel. Montech is one of my favorite PC case makers, giving us things like the Air, Sky, and King series of cases. Their slogan is, the best value, and they've really been hitting it out of the park lately, so of course I jumped at the opportunity to check out their first AIO. Allow me to introduce you to the Hyperflow all-in-one liquid cooler. They're offered in two sizes, a 240 and 360 millimeter version and they both come in black or white. The cooler's pump head and fans are addressable RGB and connect directly to your motherboard using PWM cables. Now, if you don't want RGB, the only option is to turn the lights off because they don't offer any standard models. The price is where Montech really caught me off guard with this one. The 240 comes in at $85 US and the 360 mil version is only 96. The price is the same whether you choose black or white. These are very competitive numbers and if these things can perform well against the competition, well, let's just get these things unboxed and we'll have a closer look. It's got simple packaging, but everything's nicely protected. They give you installation instructions with well-drawn pictures for first timers. I get that it's easier to pick out the hardware you need when everything's in its own little baggie, but I feel like this is overkill on the use of plastics. There's a tube wrench for installing Intel standoffs with clips for the coolant tubes to keep everything nice and neat. They give you a tube of thermal paste with what looks like a sticker and a stick for application. There's two Intel backplates and the AMD mounting bracket. The backplates are stamped with which socket they're for. I'm not sure which one you use for LGA 1200 or 2011. I guess you'll just have to test both and see which one fits. Now this is where I draw the line. Bags inside of bags inside of bags. No one needs this. You've got Intel mounting hardware for LGA 115X 2011 2066, 1200, and 1700 sockets. Radiator mounting screws for the case, and they give you clips for AMD mounting and spring nuts. You'll use two of these for AMD, and all four if going with Intel, which I'll cover in installation. The radiator is nicely protected with a cardboard sleeve and plastic wrap. It's quite slim at 27 millimeters thickness. The pump head comes with thermal paste pre-applied. So I guess the extra paste is in case you want to make some upgrades later and keep using the Hyperflow. It's pre-configured with the Intel mounting bracket. Connections on the pump head are a four pin PWM header and a three pin five volt addressable RGB connector with an add-in pigtail. All fans are pre-installed and are daisy chained together with short cables. These are Montech's Metal Pro 12 ARGB fans. They have a premium feel with rubber corners to cut down on noise. The fans are also 28 millimeters thick and run at up to 2200 RPM. They also use a proprietary seven pin connector running both your RGB and PWM signal. It does split off at the end to both a five volt addressable RGB and four pin PWM cable to connect the fans to your motherboard. Since Montech has installed the fans and cabling already for us inside the box, it makes installation very easy. I'm gonna start with Intel because it's pre-configured for this. Oh, and I don't have any PCs built right now, so I'm gonna show you installation onto the motherboard outside of a case. My Intel motherboard is an ASUS Tough Gaming Z690 Plus using LGA 1700 socket. So I'll grab the 1700 mounting bracket, line it up with the motherboard's cooler holes, and then run in the standoffs using the bag labeled appropriately with the included screwdriver tube to tighten them down. This made it a lot easier because the VRM cooling is so thick. The pump head can then be placed onto the CPU and tightened in an X pattern with the spring nuts using your fingers. Make sure to apply even tension as you're tightening. After that's secure, the radiator can then be mounted into your case. Montech has the Hyperflow set up to be installed in the top of your PC case. Pull air up and exhaust hot air out. If you want to use this front mounted, you'll need to change the fans around a bit. The last part is to plug everything in. The four pin PWM cable coming off the pump head goes into your CPU optional or pump header on your motherboard. The four pin fan cable goes into your CPU header. 
Lastly, you've got both 5 volt ARGB cables. Remember, the pump head has an extra pigtail on this connector. That's for the fans to connect to. Then the whole thing plugs into a 5 volt header on your motherboard. These are the ones that look like it's supposed to be four pins, but it's missing one. That's what you need. If your motherboard doesn't have this, sorry, it's not gonna light up. Hey, that's a great video idea. Radiator fan placement and orientation. Get subscribed and let me know in the comments if that's something you wanna see, because I do read all of them. AMD installation is even easier since their motherboards are already set up with mounting brackets for cooler installation. And Montex has decided to use those with their Hyperflow system. You'll need to slide the Intel mounting bracket off the cooler by pushing away from the tubes. Slide your AMD bracket back on in the same fashion. Insert the hook brackets into the cold plate side and thread two spring nuts onto them from the top. You don't need to turn them much, so you have flexibility to hook them onto the AMD mounting brackets. Everything else is the same from the Intel installation, so you can use the timestamps down below and go back to watch that part of the video if you need guidance. Thermal testing is my favorite part because it shows you how good or bad a cooler is. This ended up taking me way longer than it should have. I've been using the same test bench for all CPU thermal testing lately, and it's been working great. My setup is an AMD B550 Tomahawk motherboard from MSI, sporting a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. This provides plenty of heat when stress testing. If you want to know the rest of the specs, I'll leave them down below. For cooler testing, I run three different tests. I use Cinebench R23, which pushes 100% load at all CPU cores and creates a lot of heat. Then I switch over to the Blender benchmark, which is a little less intense, but still creates some heavy performance. Then finally, I move on to Unigid Heaven, which simulates a gaming workload. And that's more along the lines of what most people will be using their PCs for. I ran both the 360 and 240 mil Hyperflow coolers and an additional two coolers for comparison. I threw in the Deepcool LT720, which is a 360 millimeter AIO that performs very well in thermal testing. I also included their top CPU air cooler that comes in more expensive than the Hyperflow 360, the Assassin 4. The reason testing took me so long is I use a graphite thermal pad for all benchmark testing. It helps with cleanup between hardware changes and keeps results consistent throughout. The problem is I've used my thermal pad so much it was worn out. Crushed like a pancake. The cooler wasn't able to make good contact with the CPU and performed much worse than expected. Once I figured this out, I switched back to thermal paste and everything turned out great. Live and learn, I guess. So let's talk about these results. Cinebench is our most demanding test and it stresses the CPU to 100% load on all cores. You'll never experience this in a real world scenario, but it's cool to see what it can do. You can see the Hyperflow 360 is indeed an excellent contender, matching the LT720 74C. The 240 isn't quite as lucky and was only able to achieve 82. Things improve when switching over to Blender. The Hyperflow 240 closes the performance gap to within four degrees of the best temperatures. The 360 mil version again matches the LT720's performance. The last test I like to do and possibly the best one I could perform is Unigen Heaven. It runs the GPU and CPU as if you're playing a game. In my opinion, this is the best test and the type of demand that most gamers will put on their system. Here, the Hyperflow 240 was a few degrees hotter than the others, but the 360 mil comes in tied once again. Remember, a degree or two of difference is within run-to-run -run variance. That's why I do multiple runs for each test. Those results are great and everything, but what about Montex pre-applied thermal paste? I wanted to know if there's a difference between application methods. That sticker they gave you I talked about during unboxing has holes that will allow thermal paste onto the cooler cold plate in a neat little pattern. I had to try out this application method and see one, how hard it is to do, and two, if it makes any difference in thermal performance. Long story short, it's easy and no. No, it does not. Each test had almost the exact same results, minus the Unigen Heaven test that was about four degrees warmer using the pre-applied thermal paste. Not sure why that happened. These numbers are using the Hyperflow 360, by the way. But you can see the numbers aren't any different from using my own brand of thermal paste or Montex included stuff. Oh, I almost forgot. My thermal paste that I used in today's testing was Arctic Cooling's MX4. Really nice stuff, and I've been using it for years without issue. I find it doesn't dry out as fast in the tubes as some of the others. What about noise? A CPU cooler's performance is nothing if the fans included with it sound like a jet engine taking off in full afterwork. 
Well, I'm here to tell you it's not that bad, even at 100% load. Don't believe me? Listen for yourself. Like I said, not that bad. What a great entry into the AIO market. Performance is on par with coolers that cost twice as much, and the price comes in perfectly to grab the attention of budget buyers and enthusiasts alike. The fact that you don't need to install any extra software to use this thing gives it bonus points in my book. Oh, I almost forgot. Montec includes a six-year warranty with this cooler as well. That's on par or beating some of the bigger name cooling companies like Corsair, NZXT, and Arctic Cooling. I only have one major gripe with this cooler. There's no way to connect extra RGB to the fan setup. Unless Montec decides to come out with these fans on their own with the seven pin connector, because there is a slot on the end here to be able to pigtail in more. But I don't see that on their website and Montec didn't let me know, so maybe, maybe not. But that's my only gripe with this. If you have other RGB fans, there's no way to add it into this system. You have to connect it to another RGB header on your motherboard. Not a big deal, but it would be nice. Overall, Montec has delivered a high-end product at an entry-level price. If you're in the market for a new AIO, this one is definitely worth considering. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, this is why I keep doing this because you guys watch these videos and hopefully I help you with your PC building endeavors. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one.